The year 2020 was declared by NOAA to be the second warmest year on record. This video will put that statement into perspective. That 2020 was the second warmest year on record is based on NOAA's temperature data. We base our conclusions on this same data. For the moment, let us accept the claim that 2020 is the second hottest year on record. But what is it being compared with? What is the reference period? NOAA data only goes back as far as 1880, and for the USA only as far as 1895. So, to a certain extent, NOAA may be forced to use the 20th century as its reference period against which the annual global temperature is compared. The use of a reference period such as this implies some sort of normality, as when we say the global temperature is lower than the 20th century, or the global temperature is higher than the 20th century. But the 20th century is far from normal. It is in fact abnormal to an extreme extent. The 20th century was colder than the average of the previous 2,000 years and significantly colder than the 9,000 years or so preceding that. This fact is easily proven and can be done in three steps. Step one will show the 20th century, that's 1901 to 2000, global average temperature was colder than greater than 90% of the Holocene. That's 11,500 years ago to the present. Step two will show that the period 1901 to 1910 was colder than greater than 95% of the Holocene. That is 11,500 years ago to the present. And step three will very clearly demonstrate that the 20th century global average temperature was colder than the global average temperature of the previous 2000 years, that is 100 BCE to the year 1900. We start with step one. As long ago as 1990, the IPCC recognized that the early and middle Holocene was characterized by a relatively warm climate with summer temperatures in high northern latitude about 3 to 4 degrees Celsius above modern values. That is between 9,000 and 5,000 years BP. That's roughly 7,000 BCE to 3,000 BCE. By 2013, the IPCC reported that the global mean annual temperatures around 8 to 6,000 years ago were about 0 0.7 degrees Celsius higher, and extratropical northern hemisphere temperatures were about 1 degree Celsius higher than for pre-industrial conditions. And in so doing, they cited the study by Marcotte et al. This is the study to which the IPCC referred. It analyzed 73 globally distributed temperature records and produced a global temperature stack. This was referenced to the 1961 to 1990 instrumental mean. This is the chart produced from that data. To allow comparison to the NOAA data, it has been converted to reference the 21st century period of 1901 to 2000. This is the result. The chart, when you look at it, tells a well-known story. Here is the period referenced by the IPCC. And this is the 5,000-year period called Early Holocene Warmth in the Marcotte study. And this is the global average temperature anomaly for the period 1901 to 2000. It is significantly less than the global average temperature 
for that entire period of around 9200 BCE to 1300 CE. That is 10,500 years, which is just over 90% of the entire 11,500 years of the Holocene. So compared to a relatively warm and extremely long period, the 20th century was certainly cold. We could move immediately to step three and the conclusion, but step two goes some way towards emphasizing just how cold was the 20th century. The market report itself concludes that the decadal mean global temperature of the early 20th century that's 1900 to 1909, was cooler than greater than 95% of the Holocene. And this is easily verified by looking at the Marcot and NOAA data. The NOAA data anomaly for 1900 to 1909 is minus 0 0.31 degrees Celsius. And if this is plotted on the Marcot chart, it is certainly colder than greater than 95% of the Holocene. In fact, it looks pretty close to 100%. For the comparison, we need to make a slight adjustment to the dates and thus look at 1901 to 1910. This as an anomaly of 0 0.34 degrees Celsius. And this first 10 years of the 21st century was thus certainly colder than greater than 95% of the Holocene. To provide supporting evidence, if we take the year 1904 as just one real world example, as might be expected from the data, in 1904, Chicago was plunged into an Arctic freeze. We have therefore shown that the first 10 years of the 20th century were abnormally cold. So what of the entire 20th century? For this final step, we need to focus on the 2000 years prior to the 20th century. That is from around 100 BCE to 1900 CE. Looking at the chart, we can see the medieval climate anomaly and the Little Ice Age, both as defined by the IPCC. We note the position of the global average temperature for the 20th century. So what was the average global temperature for the preceding 2000 years? This is the average for the period 100 BCE to 1900. We can see that the global average temperature for that 2000 years was warmer than that of the 20th century by 0 0.01 degrees Celsius. Even though that 2000 years contained the exceptionally cold Little Ice Age. And even though that 2000 years was in fact much colder than the preceding 7,000 years. We have now shown that the 20th century global average temperature was colder than the global average temperature of the previous 2,000 years. But we have done much more than that. We have burst the climate crisis bubble and the very reason for COP26. The latest output from COP26 shows quite clearly the empirical fallacy upon which the very notion of a climate crisis is based. At some expense, videos have been produced that contain the message, let's restore our Earth. But what state or time are we restoring our Earth to? Is it the conditions of the Earth at the first 10 years of the 20th century which were abnormally cold? 
is it the entire 20th century, which was abnormally cold, colder than the previous 2,000 years. In fact, colder than over 90% of the 11,500 years of this current Holocene interglacial period. Or is it the earth of pre-industrial conditions that existed around 1750, which were also much colder than over 95% of the Holocene? Or is it the period used by the IPCC to measure global warming? That is 1850 to 1900. NOAA data for this period does not exist, so we will use Hadcroft 5 data, adjusted with respect to the 20th century. Once again, we have a period that is colder than greater than 95% of the past 11,500 years. And this is the start period used by the IPCC to measure global warming. So, the climate crisis mantra that the Earth is changing from some good and normal climate to a warmer, abnormal and alarming climate is shown to be utter ignorant nonsense. Pre-industrial conditions were abnormally cold. 1850 to 1900 was abnormally cold. 1901 to 1910 was abnormally cold. And the 20th century was abnormally cold. So, is current warming the natural recovery from an abnormal period of cold during the 19th and 20th century to the more normal warmth of the early Holocene? Now this is not an original thought. Back in 1990, it was suggested by the IPCC that some of the global warming since 1850 could be a recovery from the Little Ice Age, rather than a direct result of human activities. In other words, current warming is natural. Also back in 1990, the IPCC put forward the view that the rather rapid changes in global temperature seen around 1920 to 1940 are very likely to have been a natural origin. Carbon dioxide atmospheric concentration barely rose during that period or before. In other words, current warming is natural. And what of the Paris Agreement and its aim of net zero emissions? in order to restrict a global temperature rise to 1.5 degrees Celsius. As the IPCC states, it is quite normal for globally average surface temperatures to fluctuate over a range up to 2 degrees Celsius. And so, current warming is normal and natural. Given this evidence, we conclude that the current warming is the natural fluctuation from an abnormal period of cold during the 19th and 20th centuries to the more normal warmth of the early Holocene that existed for thousands of years. The scientific evidence presented entirely destroys the climate crisis mantra that the Earth's climate is changing from a good and normal climate to a warmer, abnormal and alarming climate and needs to be restored to its previous state. It is shown to be utter, ignorant nonsense. But for the sake of intelligent discussion, 
We asked the climate crisis intellectuals, Mr. Alok Sharma and Mr. John Kerry, and the organizers of COP26, one simple question. To what time and conditions are you trying to restore planet Earth? Please tell us. <laughs>